All right, now that we know how to rewrite the problem, let's move forward and use counters to actually solve our problem with zero pairs, okay? So a zero pair is a positive and a negative counter, right? A zero pair is when you have a positive and a negative counter that cancel each other out, okay? They're gonna cancel each other out. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So counters are just little, you know, chips or pictures that represent the positives and the negatives. So the first one that I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a key where my positives are blue, okay? And my negatives are purple, okay? So I have a key and I'm going to use this key to create a counter for this. So before I can actually do that, I need to draw my wall and rewrite my numbers. So I'm gonna draw my wall and I'm gonna say, okay, this is negative five and over here I have positive three. So now that I've rewritten my numbers, I'm gonna actually draw out my counters. So, for my positives, I have three positives. So I'm gonna draw one, two, three. Okay, there's my three positive counters and I got that from right there. And then I'm gonna draw out my negatives. I have five negative counters. So one, two, three, four, five, okay? And from there, I am going to use my zero pairs to solve. So remember, a zero pair is one positive and one negative counter. When you have one positive and one negative, they cancel out to become zero. So we have a zero pair here, and a zero pair here, and a zero pair here. And anything that's left over after you get rid of your zero pairs is going to be your answer. So the answer to this problem is negative two. So we're literally taking our five negatives and our three positives and we're canceling out our zeros and that leaves that negative two. All right, let's try another one. So this time our counters are gonna look a little different and sometimes they do, okay? Sometimes your counters might be squares or triangles or rectangles. There's all kinds of different counters. Okay, this time I'm going to use a colored in yellow circle and a colored in green circle, okay? And I'm gonna tell you with my key that the yellows will be positive and the greens will be negative, okay? And so before I get started on my problem, I need to draw my line, my wall, and rewrite my numbers. So my first number is just a negative four. My second number has a battle between good and evil. So anytime I'm battling between good and evil, remember in math, evil wins. So that's just gonna be negative seven. So I have a negative four and a negative seven. And so from there, I'm just gonna draw my counters. So for my first number, I had negative four counters. So I'm gonna draw my four, one, two, three, and four. And then for my negative seven, I just have seven more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. And it's always a good idea that if they give you a picture like this where they're colored, that you go ahead and you just label them. So all the yellows will have a plus sign and all the greens will have a minus sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that negative or that minus on each of my greens just to remind me that those are negatives, okay? So in this case, I don't have any zero pairs because remember a zero pair has to have one positive and one negative. But if I look at my problem, all of my counters are negatives. All of my numbers are a negative four and a negative seven. So in this case, I can't cancel anything out and I'm just going to count them up. So in this problem, 
my answer will be negative 11 because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 negative counters. All right, so that's our second example. Let's go on and move on to our example number three. So remember in examples, you have to, before you can do anything, you have to rewrite that problem. So I'm gonna draw my wall and I'm gonna rewrite this as a positive six. Remember when it doesn't have a sign, that stays positive. And on this side, I have a negative 10. Remember a minus sign, a subtraction sign is the same as a negative. Okay, so those are my two numbers. So then I need to create some counters. So in this case, I think I will do red and green and I'll do triangles. So I'm gonna say my green triangles are positives and my red triangles can be negatives, okay? And again, we're just creating a key. If you see a problem, it'll probably give you a key. All right, so to start, I'm gonna start with my six positives. So I need six green triangles. I'm gonna label all with a positive sign just to remind myself that those are positives. So that's four, five, six. There's my six green positives. And then I have to have 10 negatives. So I'm gonna switch over to my red and I'm gonna write out my 10 negatives. And you notice I stack them when I do this. So there's a negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you'll notice that 10 had more power in this problem, right? It had more negative power than the six positive power. So let's cross off our zero pairs. So I'm gonna grab my pen and I'm just gonna start marking off my zero pairs. So I have one positive and one negative. So I'm gonna cross those off. One positive and one negative. That's a zero pair, they go away. One positive and one negative, that's a zero pair. One positive and one negative. One positive and one negative. Just getting rid of my zero pairs. So I don't have any more positives to cancel out my negatives. So my final answer will be what's left over. Okay, so I have more negatives left over, right? Because there were more negatives in my problem than there were positives. So I have a negative four as my answer. All right. And again, you notice that this, the negatives are bigger, so my answer ended up being negative. If I go back to my first examples, in the first example, the negatives were again bigger. There were five, of neg five negatives, so my answer was still negative. And then in this one, they were all negatives, right? So they just stayed negative. So let's try example number four. All right, so we're going to draw our wall and we're gonna rewrite our numbers. This is a negative eight. And this time I have two evils who are gonna to get together and make a plus sign, okay? And then now I'm ready to create a key and rewrite my problems. So let's see, this time, hmm. Let's see, this time I'll do some pink and some orange. So we have a pink circle or we have an orange circle. And our key is gonna say that the pink are positive and our orange are negative, okay? And again, that's just a key. It just tells us which ones are positive and which ones are negative. And what you can do is when you finish drawing them, you can write out your positive or negative on them. All right, so negative eight. So I'm gonna start with my negative eight. So I need eight orange dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. And remember, I can go back 
and I can put the negative sign on all of those just to remind me that those are negatives. And then I have a positive four because my two negatives got together. And so those are gonna be my pink color. So I have one, two, three, and four positive pinks. And again, I'm gonna go back and draw my positive sign on those just so that I remember they are positive. All right, now I'm ready to get rid of my zero pairs. So I have a positive and a negative, and I'm gonna cross those off. A positive and a negative, I'm gonna cross those off. A positive and a negative, I'm gonna cross those off. A positive and a negative, I'm gonna cross those off. I got rid of all my zero pairs, and I have a remainder, a leftover of negative four. Negative four, I'm gonna rewrite that in orange. Negative four, that's what was left after we got rid of our zero pairs. Again, you notice that my answer was negative simply because I had more negatives in my original problem than I did positives. If I had more positives to start with, my final answer would be positive. All right, and so that's how we use counters to solve, guys. So go practice using your creating counters and using your zero pairs.